Vsauce, Kevin here with two known criminals, and we have to find out who's most likely to re-offend. Is it the teenage girl who stole a neighbor's scooter and rode it around her neighborhood before dropping it on a lawn and walking away? Or the 41-year-old male who's already been convicted of armed robbery? Who do you think is more likely to commit another crime? The answer is, it doesn't matter who you choose. Algorithms are being used to determine future criminals. One widely used in the United States is likely to label the scooter thief as a higher risk than the actual violent felon. And the Supreme Court decided, if the algorithm gets it wrong, it doesn't care. That scenario is actually real. On a scale of one to 10, measuring a criminal's likelihood of recidivism, whether they're gonna commit more crimes in the future, the teen scooter thief was rated an eight. The seasoned armed robber was rated a three. Predicting who will commit a crime has been an inexact science for centuries. In the late 1700s, Viennese psychologist Franz Joseph Gall ushered in the era of phrenology the theory that bumps on your head predicted personality traits. George Combe even identified three skull shapes that not only predicted criminality, but determined whether the person should be held responsible for their criminal actions. But do you know who's most likely to commit a crime? People who are already criminals. It's common sense to factor criminal history into sentencing to protect society. The more crime you've committed, the higher the likelihood that you'll commit more, so the more time you spend in prison. But judges and juries are human. It can be difficult to tell whether someone can be rehabilitated or whether they've already learned their lesson. And we can't just guess. There should be a fair, unbiased risk assessment algorithm to counter the shortcomings of human judgment. What we've got might as well be head bumps and skull shapes. Equivance website says software for justice. You make decisions that matter, we make software to support them. We're advancing justice one step at a time. When the company was known as North Point, they developed Compass Software, correctional offender management profiling for alternative sanctions. It's one of many risk assessment tools used by New York, California, and a range of municipalities to help courts assess an offender's risk of recidivism. The assessment works like this. Defendants are asked over a hundred questions about their criminal history, family and educational background, work history, and lifestyle. All things that a century of social science research in psychology and criminology have shown to correlate with antisocial behavior. Compass's result is a simple score on a 10-point scale, with 10 being the highest risk of reoffending. Everyone has an actual Compass risk assessment, including me. Let's find out how likely I am to commit a crime. Arrest for violent offenses, no. Drug trafficking, no. Prison, probation, parole, gang member, no. This seems pretty straightforward, and saying yes to any of those would probably predict criminal behavior. Do you live with friends? No, but what if I did? I used to. Lots of people live with their friends because they're friends. I always behave myself in school, agree or disagree? I mean, most of the time, yeah, definitely, and I didn't do anything crazy. I did get detention once for writing an inappropriate poem. It really was not a very nice poem, but... Does that poem really have any bearing on whether I'll be a criminal as an adult? What delinquent mistake did you make as a student? Can you verify your employer? Yes. How often do you worry about financial survival? Often, sometimes, or never. I would think almost literally everyone would say often. How often do you feel bored? Do you feel discouraged at times? Is it difficult for you to keep your mind on one thing for a long time? Have I felt sad in my life? Have I played sick to get out of something? To get ahead in life, do you have to put yourself first? Do I always practice what I preach? 
this is starting to get kind of weird. Lots of people feel bored or sad sometimes. What does any of this really indicate? And this criminal attitude section has a lot of questions that have a range of valid philosophical answers, like whether the law helps average people, whether a hungry person has a right to steal, or whether victimless crimes like recreational drug use are actually crimes. To get my score, my answers to these 137 questions would be fed into an expertly developed algorithm that looks something like this. A total black box. No one knows how the algorithm works at all. We do know that their formula for assessing the risk of violent recidivism is risk score S equals current age A plus the age at their first arrest plus history of violence H plus vocational education scale plus history of non-compliance with every single term adjusted by a negative or positive weighted multiplier. Oh, and according to Compass, weight given to multipliers is, quote, determined by the strength of the item's relationship to person offense recidivism that we observed in our study data. Makes sense, right? Wrong. If you'd like an explanation of how that determines someone's violent recidivism rate, guess what? So did Eric Loomis. In Loomis versus the state of Wisconsin, Eric Loomis pleaded guilty to fleeing a traffic officer and operating a vehicle without the owner's consent. He protested that his due process rights were violated by the black box that is the Compass algorithm. He was sentenced to six years in prison, influenced in part by his Compass rating, and his appeal went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. They declined to hear his case, and the inner workings of Compass continue to be proprietary and protected by law as a trade secret. The United States Sentencing Commission, which I highlighted in my last video, also declined to investigate whether risk assessment algorithms were valid, but ProPublica did. They highlighted that ridiculous outcome of the scooter girl, Brisha Borden, and armed robber, Vernon Prater. Their investigation found that Compass was spectacularly inaccurate by underpredicting the rate of reoffense by white defendants and overpredicting recidivism by black defendants. Two years later, Borden hadn't committed any more crimes, and Prater was serving an eight-year prison term for stealing thousands of dollars of electronics. But the problem isn't just Compass. In a meta-analysis of algorithmic approaches to predicting recidivism, eight out of nine of them didn't work. An article in the Harvard Data Science Review said, we're in the age of secrecy and unfairness. Exactly the problem that risk assessment tools were created to solve. How bad are these supposedly advanced tools? You could get the same results by polling Twitter. Researchers from Dartmouth College showed 400 random volunteers on the internet sets of 50 descriptions of defendants' age, sex, and prior criminal history. They predicted whether each of the 50 would reoffend within two years of their last crime. Their median accuracy was basically the same as Compass. Reddit and Twitter are just as good as the algorithm, and no court would take cash money SpongeBob avatars as authoritative. Do you seriously think the Supreme Court would ignore trial by Twitter? And a researcher at Duke University found that a simple calculation involving a defendant's age, sex, and prior convictions also yielded the same predictive power as Compass. So, what are we even doing? Equivent has recently updated Compass to address some of the criticism, which is good. But what's the real problem here? Is there a limit to how we can use data as a replacement for personal judgment? Is human nature too complex and unpredictable to be supplanted by an equation? Are we too ignorant of what leads to recidivism to build a useful predictive model? Or are we just still in the infancy of this technology? And will AI help bridge the knowledge gaps that currently ruin lives? Is predicting human behavior just something we can't math our way out of? And if we could, should we? 
And as always, thanks for watching.